This one is going to be a little bit different. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun with the calculus of differential forms in 2D, in 3D, and solve some problems in the context of data, using data to approximate certain geometric quantities. Our first example of this is going to be a little bit fun, a little bit fanciful. Let's say that you have a swarm of drones and you send them out to, you know, bzzz, they like go all over the place. And what they do is they use their camera to find the boundary of two regions. Let's say it's between land and sea or forest and desert, or maybe looking for the boundary of a forest fire. And what they do is set up a local communications network and then try to collectively estimate the area that is in this region that is bounded by these drones on the boundary of this domain. Now the question is, can they compute that area without a, a central computer, without a bird's eye view? So no satellite data, no picture from above, like what you may be seeing, just local information. Okay, so what are the assumptions that we have to work with here? Well, the assumptions are that these drones know their coordinates. I've got n of these boundary points, and they are at known positions. They have GPS, they know exactly where they are, and they communicate with their neighbors and set up a network where they know who is, so to speak, to their left and to their right. So they have this consistent orientation around the boundary and that collectively they bound some planar region, let's call it D. Can you estimate the area of D just based on this local information? Well, I think we can, and the way that we're going to do it is by building a list of edges with start and end points. So let's call these edges gamma i. i is gonna go from one to n. Each has a start point with coordinates x one i, y one i, and an end point with coordinates x two i, y two i. Now those i's are superscripts, they're not powers. What they mean is that these are the coordinates associated to the start and end point of the ith segment in this boundary path. Okay, so given that setup, given that data structure, here is a distributed algorithm that estimates this area using a path integral of one forms. This harkens back to an idea that we saw back in chapter six. The idea is this, if we consider the area of this domain D, what you get by integrating the area to form over the interior, then Green's theorem says you can replace that with the integral over the boundary of the domain of a certain one form field. We're going to use one half x dy minus y dx. Is that gonna work? Well, let's check it. If I take x dy minus y dx and I differentiate that one form, what I get is the two form dx wedge dy minus dy wedge dx, which of course is twice the area form dx wedge dy. That's why we have the one half out in front. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's think about what do we do next. What we do next is we take each of those edges. Remember that gamma i? We're going to take that edge that goes from x1, y1 to x2, y2, and we're going to parametrize that edge using some parameter t. Gamma i of t is going to be x1i plus x2i minus x1i times t. That's the x coordinate. The y coordinate is going to be y1i plus quantity y2i minus y1i times t. Here t is going to go from zero to one. That gives us a straight line path from the start point to the end point. Now what we need to do is plug that in to the one form field, one half x dy minus y dx, and then integrate that over this path. What do I get? Well, the x becomes x1 plus quantity x2 minus x1t, 
And then the dy comes from differentiating the y term, that's y2 minus y1. Then we subtract y, which is y1 plus quantity y2 minus y1t, then multiply by dx, which is x2 minus x1. Integrate that as t goes from 0 to 1, and what do we get? Well, it looks a little complicated, but with some algebraic simplification of that integrand, we get that all the t's drop out, and we're left with 1 half x1 times quantity y2 minus y1 minus y1 times quantity x2 minus x1, and with a little bit more simplification, what we get is 1 half times x1 y2 minus y1 x2. Now each of these has the i superscripts on it. That's just the integral over a single edge. That's the, the contribution of the ith edge. So to get the net area, we add up all of these one form integrals as i goes from 1 to n. And that gives us the combinatorial formula, 1 half, the sum as i goes from 1 to n, x1i, y2i, minus y1i, x2i, and that is, that's pretty cool. This is just using local information that you could structure by message passing, the drones can talk to their neighbors, and collectively, they can figure out the area of this bounded domain. That's a really cool application of Green's theorem that takes all that local data and turns it to something global. Now, that formula, although it's nice, it might seem a little weird. I mean, where does that come from? It's not really all that strange. In fact, if you think about it, you might recognize something behind that formula, something that we've seen, I don't know, a while ago. That x1, y2, minus y1, x2, if I think about x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 as being coordinates of vectors, then this seems to be related to determinants. If I think about what happens when I look at the ith edge and I take that vector, look at the parallelogram that is spanned by the vectors giving the coordinates of those points, then the area of that parallelogram is that determinant, x1, y2, minus y1, x2. Taking one half means you chop off at that edge and throw away the outer part. Now that is really cool, especially since the determinant is giving you oriented area. It might be positive, it might be negative, depending on the orientation, which way are you going about the origin. I think it's really cool how Green's theorem takes care of all of that orientation data and adds up these local contributions to give you the net area.